Okay, this lesson is about using those input-output tables for functions and other relations, mostly uh, functions. So let's just start with a regular equation for a function. Now this equation that we're gonna write could represent anything. So if I write something like y equals two x, that could represent that we left the faucet on and we're leaking out or putting water out into the yard at two gallons per minute at X is the number of minutes. It could be, that could be it. This could be gallons per minute, two gallons per minute, and it could be multiplied by the number of minutes. And so Y would be the total gallons. Whatever it represents, then we have this equation, Y equals two X, representing that problem situation. Well, when we make an input-output table, uh, the input is usually the x. Okay, I said usually, but I'm, I really mean like almost like 99.99% of the time, almost always, the input is x. Okay, and, and then the output would be y. Because what we want to find out is how many total gallons, right? That's the output. That's what we want to find out. How many total gallons would be wasted if we left the hose on for however many minutes, right? The input is the number of minutes. What if we left the hose on for 45 minutes? Well, that could be our input. See, we could put any number in for the input. Usually, we don't use large numbers because we're graphing things and small numbers are easier to work with. So sometimes for our inputs, we just use nice small numbers, you know, like 0, 1, and 2. And that would be okay. And in that case, the zero, the one, and the two represent x values that we just chose randomly. Like we could use anything. Uh, and then the y values for each x value, we're gonna have our own y value. Y equals two times whatever the x value is. So if x is zero, it's two times zero, which is zero. Uh, for one, it's gonna be two times one, which is two. For two, it's gonna be two times two, which is four. And what that means is for the hose being left on for two minutes, I'm gonna waste four gallons of water because two gallons per minute times two minutes. Okay, but see, I can use any number for the input if I want to. What if I just went outside 15 minutes later and found out, ah, oh, the hose is still on, I gotta turn it off. Okay, so the hose is on for 15 minutes. I can use that for an input. And then I could find the output, y equals two times 15, and that would be 30. So that's how you use an input-output table. Like, you can choose anything for the input. Plug it in, do the math, get the output. And that's the way the equation is designed, because see, the x being the input, we do the math with the input, see, in this case, two times x to get the output. Now we can have a more complicated equation. Let's say that we already saved $250 in our bank account, but we're adding $10 per week. And we wanna find out how, my, how much money we're gonna have after so many weeks. Okay, so here's an equation different from the last one. Okay, so this is like the beginning amount of money because I said we had $250 in our bank account. That's the beginning amount that we had. Uh, this is what we're increasing our bank account by. This is like the rate of increase, okay? The rate of change. How do I get rid of that thing there? Okay, rate which is uh, $10 per week, and then uh, X would be the number of weeks. Number of weeks. See, the rate and the number of weeks, they kind of have to go together, so if this is uh, dollars per week, then it would have to be the number of weeks. Okay, so if we made an input-output table for that, X, Y, X would be the number of weeks. You can label it. And Y is going to be the total amount of money in your bank account. 
Total dollars. Okay, so you can choose anything for the number of weeks. The reason we don't choose anything is because we like to graph small numbers and use the graph as a trend to see where this is going, okay? So normally we'll choose, oh, well, if I save money for zero weeks, it's gonna be 250. See, now it's gonna be 250 plus 10 times zero, which is just 250. So you start small, that way you can see what's happening. And then choose numbers that are consistently going up by the same amount. That way you can see what's happening. So at the end of one week, it would be 250 times, oops, oh, plus 10 times 1. So that's 250 plus 10, so that's 260. Oh, I can see that every time I add an eight, a week, I'm going to go up by 10 extra dollars. So 2, 270. See, and then that makes the math easier. Because I can see the pattern, 250, 260, 270, the next one's going to be 280. I can tell that without doing the math, as long as this is 0, 1, 2, 3. But if you choose, let's say, well, what about 52 weeks? Well, then you have to do the math. Okay, so 52 weeks. So it's going to be 250 plus 10 times 52. So 10 times 52 is 520. 520 plus 250. It's going to be about 770. Okay, but you can do it. But that's why when we make an input output table, we can choose any amount that we want for the X because that's our input. Choose anything. Define the Y that goes with that. So you plug that value into the equation and then do the math in the equation. So if it's 250 plus 10X, you have to take 10 times your X value right, order of operations, multiply before adding, then add 250, and so that's how we get those input output tables. Okay.